Although he had a subjective, this is actually a passive voice. So, oh, yeah. If you can hear the sound of my voice, could you please clap once? If you can hear the sound of my voice, can you please clap twice? Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome, welcome to our uh, July ATQ Tech. You are all champs for braving the horrendous art fair. Uh, congratulations on making it this far. Uh, navigating uh, Ann Arbor's uh, close streets is uh, no small task. Uh, I'm Zach Steinler, uh, your host. Uh, I'm a area entrepreneur uh, here in Ann Arbor. Uh, my company is Owaki, uh, with both my channel websites. Uh, and many of you are probably familiar with the A2 uh, New Tech format. Uh, our schedule is a little bit uh, abbreviated this month from a summer vacation, uh, but we have three speakers who will be giving a five-minute presentation followed by a five-minute Q&A. Uh, the purpose of this event is twofold. It's for startups to announce themselves to the community and to sort of uh, tell us uh, and teach us about entrepreneurship. And it's also for us to ask them questions and learn uh, and sort of uh, uh, communicate the lessons that we've learned about entrepreneurship. Uh, so please, uh, any questions for the presentations, we'll have a uh, Q&A for each uh, And so without further ado, please welcome our first presenter. Thank you, Zach. Hello everyone, glad to be here in Ann Arbor. I'm all the way here from Silicon Valley. So, uh, a, a long trek, but pretty excited to be here. Uh, a lot of Big Ten heritage in the company. Uh, this is a company called PhoneMind. Uh, I'm the co-founder and CEO of the company, and uh, we are all about enterprise mobility, making enterprise organizations go mobile the fastest way possible. That's really what uh, we do. Been around in business for about five years. We're venture-backed, uh, based in Silicon Valley. And we are here looking for talent. So that's why I'm here. Uh, we're looking to expand uh, R&D capabilities here and uh, partner, collaborate with the entrepreneurial spirit and the technology uh, talent here. Uh, primarily, we sell to uh, Fortune 500 companies, uh, a, lot, a large number of uh, Fortune 500 corporations. Uh, some examples here, um, Cisco, Intel, technology sector, Mass Mutual, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, really across uh, uh, different verticals. These are our customers. What's the problem we solve? What are we doing for these guys? Uh, very, very simple to understand. Uh, if you look at any large enterprise organization, they have invested in a lot of applications, enterprise applications over the last decade or so. Uh, Off-the-shelf applications, custom applications that they've built internally, uh, cloud applications, etc. And they're looking to actually make them all available on the edge on mobile devices. That's uh, that's, the, that's a sort of an irreversible trend happening in the industry. Uh, there's a huge penchant and desire to access a lot of these corporate applications in a secure way on mobile devices. Today, it's a huge problem because most of it is accessed through point applications, which don't talk to each other, and uh, or people are kind of custom building these applications, which is too costly and too uh, expensive to go out and do. Uh, we have a solution, a SaaS solution that sort of acts as a gateway and essentially connects to a wide variety of enterprise applications out of the box. It also allows you to connect to even legacy applications and the front end automatically synthesizes it on wide variety of uh, edge devices, whether it's smartphones, tablets, uh, uh, notebooks, what have you. Uh, we do it as a software as a service model. Uh, we're working with a lot of those organizations I talked about uh, before, uh, typically on a per user per month kind of a uh, pricing model. And the most important thing is it doesn't require any coding. Uh, that's the biggest traction. That's why it's the fastest. So that's that's the punchline. Is it really that easy? Uh, it is. Uh, I can show you some live demos of it in the networking session, but I, I thought I'd just put a couple of screenshots here. Um, essentially, as I talked about, we connect to a wide variety of apps. What kind of apps? Could be uh, apps uh, listed here like uh, SharePoint, Oracle CRM, Remedy, classic legacy applications, also a lot of uh, cloud applications, more, uh, more recent ones like software. Uh, Salesforce.com and Box and Jive and things like that. But the idea is to be able to take all of these application accesses and combine them very, very quickly through this concept of application and data connectors, which essentially speak to a mobile device uh, in a very optimized manner through a mobile spec and also help you construct workflows where you can actually talk to these applications uh, quickly, which means if a salesperson wants to pull up a presentation and then very quickly email it to a customer, and then very quickly also log an opportunity record in a CRM. That's an example of a simple workflow that touches three systems. Okay, and if you don't have an integrated experience there, you gotta go to each one of those applications and actually make that happen. Uh, very cumbersome, very difficult to do. We make that a snap because you could drag and drop those uh, connectors, define those workflows, define your user interface uh, the way you want it with a lot of different layouts, and essentially what you end up with is applications that are beautiful and easy, they're very secure, they can connect to a wide variety of enterprise apps, 
uh, and you choose the kinds of layouts that you want, and it's out of the box. It provides you unified access at the top uh, one there, where if I'm a salesperson, in one snapshot, it tells me whom I'm meeting, what are their LinkedIn profiles. It's pulling data from uh, news, CRM, LinkedIn, and a wide variety of different data sources, and putting it all together in one easy to access manner, uh, without doing any kind of coding. So that's the that's the biggest value proposition. Uh, you'll launch that. You can, of course, track it. There's built-in analytics into it. So you get to track it and analyze it. And uh, why are we here? We need people to be able to go out and simultaneously innovate on four areas, which are our key parts of our IT. Um, mobiles, mobile side, UI, UX, automatic synthesis, synthesis is one area where we're doing some cutting edge work. Uh, backend integration, I talked about out of the box connectors. We're looking for really solid enterprise backend uh, uh, engineers and uh, talent there. Security and analytics, of course, are key whenever you're looking to sell your enterprise. Uh, and why is all of this important? It's pretty transformational. There's nothing like this exists. We're the first to market with something like this with an out-of-the-box solution. So it's a transformational technology that's been adopted in uh, Fortune 500. And uh, really, it combines the best of mobile and best of cloud. Really, uh, what mobile is meant for in a corporate environment. And uh, most importantly, we've got our uh, venture back partners here uh, from Michigan eLab. They've got uh, great space here in Menlo. And we're trying to use that as a space to start up. So interested? Please talk to us. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Yes. Are you familiar with Hootsuite? Who? Hootsuite. Hootsuite? Yeah. Uh, my leak. What was the nature of the question? Oh, Uh, what's the sales cycle timeline look like? Very good question. Sales cycle. Uh, we primarily sell to large enterprises through system integrator partners. We don't sell direct there. Uh, we have a combination of that. And in the direct sales piece, we're mostly focused on the mid-market. Mid-market sales cycles are roughly around, uh, we are seeing around anywhere from 6 to 12 weeks. Um, large enterprise cycles are classic enterprise sales, sales cycles. Uh, they can range from as little as three months, if you're lucky, or six to seven months. That's the standard uh, sales cycle we've seen. And typically, large enterprise deals are a uh, few hundred minimum to thousands of licenses, user licenses. Um, Mid-market is anywhere from 100 to 500. Any other questions? Uh, no question. Yes, please. Yeah, so I'm no stranger to uh, integrations. Uh, when they're done well, uh, it's tremendously empowering to your sales force. Um, uh, that's often the exception, not the norm. And so I was just wondering, uh, with your with your integrations, are you hoping to mirror all this data into a system that you control, or are you just sort of like connecting up these data sources to each other? Very good question. It's very, very critical that you actually maintain a single source of truth when you're selling to enterprises. Otherwise, enterprise IT is going to just throw you out of the door. Right? So, so this data stays where it is. What we've done is we've created these pipes, rewrite channels, Right, which takes a subset of business logic and a subset of data, because not everything is actually required on a mobile device. Right, you're not trying to shrink fit the whole application onto this. That's not useful. Right, you're taking, trying to look at specific context and specific use cases, which typically represent on an average 20 to 25 percent of your functionality, and you're taking that through APIs and making it available here. So a lot of that stuff is happening at runtime. The data stays where it is, and so you're manipulating it, reading and writing it over secure channels. And it does seem like it's uh, oriented towards a, a mobile sales force, maybe in particular. That's uh, one so great example, support. but field, source, uh, field service enablement is another big use case. Uh, even employee enablement internally within companies where people want access to HR applications, approvals, expense reports. These are kinds of things that people want access on these devices nowadays. They don't want to go to the desktop. Uh, those are some other good examples as well. But sales force is a big check, yeah. Do you compete against MuleSoft? MuleSoft? Well, um, there's a lot of development platforms and there's a lot of development companies uh, which we typically call as mobile application platforms, which essentially cater to more developers. They're not necessarily, uh, which can get you to the same end goal, let's put it this way, where you actually can take that and have a bunch of developers actually utilize it and build it out. Uh, what we're focused on is trying to raise the bar to the next level in terms of the automation, where even business analysts and marketing, sales operations people, without any programming expertise, can very quickly mobilize use cases. So the no code path to the key. 
What's on your roadmap for location-based data and geofencing of your app? We already do that already. So because we actually deliver all of these apps in a container app, which is actually a native app that sits on this, there's both native and uh, HTML5 as well, but in the native case, there's a lot of rich integration with the device itself. Camera, GPS, you know, address book, calendar, etc. And then we utilize the data in the back end to be able to do things like geofencing or location-based analytics and things like that. What type of presence are you looking to establish in Ann Arbor? Primarily to start with r and That's the primary. We need uh, tech talent uh, specifically uh, to those four areas that we talked about. There's obviously a rich uh, technical uh, uh, knowledge and know-how and, and heritage here, lots of companies here, uh, and uh, security, analytics, you know, both the front end as well as the back end. So opportunity is obviously uh, unique in the sense that somebody can actually work on many aspects of it and potentially even move from one to the other. Uh, and uh, we, we are pushing the boundaries on each one of those things. So in size-wise, how many people? Uh, we are initially starting looking at around a small team, of core team of around four to five people, and then kind of grow, grow from there. Uh, this is obviously our first foray here. And uh, as I said, uh, a lot of Big Ten heritage, so there's always a lot of uh, desire to do something here uh, in the last uh, couple of years, the time has come, so we figured uh, this is the time to come and present and introduce ourselves to the community here. Any other questions? Yes? Oh, that's one. No, wait. Go ahead. Uh, so in, in the bring, bring your own device world, um, are you already integrated from a security perspective with kind of people who kind of bring their own personal phone? Yes. To work? How does that work? Yeah, the question was around bring your own device. Uh, yes, we out of the box integrate and are compatible with a lot of MDM companies, mobile device management players like uh, Good Technology, like uh, AirWatch, Mobile Iron, and a number of other Citrix, etc. So typically in a bring your own device environment, enterprises have deployed one of those vendors as a MDM control mechanism, and we are compatible. Our applications are compatible. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, there are a lot of announcements to cover uh, in a uh, short period of time. Uh, I wanted to make you guys aware of some uh, entrepreneurial events that are upcoming uh, in the Southeast Michigan area. Uh, I just learned that every third Thursday in Detroit, uh, there's a Bootstrappers Breakfast. Uh, they are organized on uh, meetup.com. Uh, so if you find yourself on uh, that side of the state on Thursday morning, I would strongly encourage you to uh, check it out. Um, also, uh, two weekends from now is uh, Maker Fair Detroit, uh, July 26th, 27th. It is a tremendous event. Uh, basically, hundreds of thousands of uh, people, uh, makers, uh, artisans, architects, uh, playing with uh, technology in all sorts of different forms. And uh, they might still need volunteers. They might still need which volunteers. Which gets you in free. free. Gets you one yeah. free ticket. It's at the Henry Ford Museum. Uh, it's a really stellar event. Uh, definitely check it out um, if uh, that is your cup of tea. Uh, okay. Uh, and up next is uh, Auto Pepper. <coughs> All right, thanks for coming out tonight, guys. Uh, I'm Steven Sherman from Auto Power, and um, just going over a little bit of what we've worked on the past uh, two and a half months. Um, so like I said, I'm Steven, recent graduate from University of Michigan, where I studied energy systems engineering and entrepreneurship. My passion really lies in solving the terawatt problem of global energy consumption. So our story begins with a high level question. How do we get people to start paying attention to the energy they're using and use less of it? The answer may have come from a behavioral science study run about 10 years ago in Southern California. Uh, graduate students went around door to door every week placing door hangers on people's doors that had a suggestion of turning off your AC and turning on your fans with different messages. One said you could save $55 a month. Another said you could lower your carbon footprint 5%, and a third message said um, you could help prevent blackouts in the area. Most people think the money-saving message worked best of all. Fun fact, none of these had any <laughs> impact on energy consumption. But there was a fourth message that said when surveyed, 75% of your neighbors are turning off their AC and turning on their fans. This really got people to pay attention um, and act on the suggestion. So. Um, we looked at applying this um, behavioral science to fuel economy, knowing that um, driver behavior can um, impact significantly impact fuel economy. And we formed Auto Power to uh, collect driving data through what's known as the OBD port, a 
apply this behavioral science research um, and give some kind of driver feedback report with the goal of helping people save on fuel. Um, a big question we asked is who would pay for this or who would use it? Um, we looked at a few different options, direct to consumer, uh, ride sharing platforms, light duty fleet operators. We ultimately um, made our, our first hypothesis around automotive insurance providers um, for a few key reasons. First, everyone's required to have insurance, as you all know. Um, next, um, fuel efficient and safe driving, safe driving behaviors tend to overlap, and insurance companies are obviously motivated heavily to uh, reduce both accidents and the number of miles driven. And third, um, you may have seen what some is usage-based insurance, or you probably know it as progressive snapshot. Um, this is actually a huge trend in the industry we are looking to leverage. So with this hypothesis, we got out of the building and interviewed over um, 30 players in the automotive insurance chain. Um, and we also um, attend the Telemax update event in Novi, Michigan, and really just wanted to learn what are the problems with this usage-based insurance and how could our um, solution we had in mind fit in. Um, so we did confirm that UBI is the biggest trend in the industry and it's important because um, the key to insurance is being as specific as you can on the pricing model without violating any kind of state regulation. Um, we learned that loss ratio, frequency, and severity of accidents are all the key metrics for insurance providers and they're constantly doing everything they can do to reduce these. Um, and we found that actuaries, or the people that actually do the pricing, already use other correlations like um, credit score, um, grades in school, and, and past driving record to prices. So we didn't think fuel economy was too far off. Um, we also found that major insurance companies are doing quite a few um, in-house consumer facing services. And that there's another industry known as Telemax Solutions Providers that are providing these UBI um, services. So we looked at these as well. Um, where we stand now, uh, obviously a much better understanding of UBI. Um, and we learned that the biggest problem with this UBI is that they have so much data and they're unsure of what to do with it. So this was kind of somewhat of a validation that our driver coaching with this behavioral science could fit into um, the value chain. Um, we did drop the hardware component um, because it's basically already met in the market. Um, and we're now investigating Telemax solutions providers that are looking for these value-added services. Um, so moving forward, like I said, further exploring this channel, um, I also set up a quick landing page to kind of set up interest with a um, direct-to-driver uh, beta program at the web address here. And kind of most importantly, I'm looking for a technical co-founder. Um, we've done quite a bit of market validation I covered, and it's time to start building something, get it in the hands of drivers, see if we can um, in, impact behavior at all. Um, here's a quick screenshot of our uh, landing page. I actually made it with a tool called Quick MVP. I'd love to talk about the questions. Um, and like I said, looking for a technical co-founder, um, interest or experience in the clean tech space, and um, someone that thinks this is an awesome project as well. Thank you. Notice you didn't talk to actual insurance customers. How are you dealing with the privacy issue? Sure. Um, I, I didn't include it in here, but we did. Um, when we originally started with this idea and kind of wondering, um, you know, what vertical we want to go after, I, I did about 30 interviews with drivers. Um, we found that um, no one knew about any of the direct to consumer, I guess, competitors out there. And the, the biggest name out there was Progressive um, Insurance with their snapshot. Um, there are actually already uh, about 5 million drivers on uh, usage-based insurance programs. So that kind of validated to us that there's at least some acceptance of, the, of it in the market since it's already at about 5 million drivers. And um, again, I don't know the specifics of how our, our reporting fits into that. We're still kind of learning it. Have you seen a company, there's a company called Automatic.com? Yep. Not, not, not WordPress, but uh, the Asian Works company. They're, they're, they're all such an investor here, RPM Ventures. Yep. That, uh, I don't know if you've got to already, but. Yeah, so um, Automatic, let me 
Did it build the device? Yep. Okay. They were, they're actually the picture I have in the top left. Um, just as a quick uh, overview, they sell um, the OBD dongle and the app for, is with it for $99. I think their main channel is the Apple Store. Um, and we, we kind of saw that as um, uh, capturing the, the really early adopters, so the people that want the quantified self or the, the really um, passionate people about fuel economy or, or similar trends. So since we're not directly charging the consumer or anything or the driver, um, it's kind of a different business model that we hope opens up to a much wider market. The follow-up question is, you know, Robert Trudini, Influence, five percent, great, great book, and then end up doing O power, right? Kind of a way to influence consumer consumption of energy stuff through. Um, I, I get the analog to like the insurance company, but why wouldn't the insurance company just work with like an automatic to implement some of those kinds of kind of? Cause they already have some amount of driver feedback and so forth. And is there? Is there um, I don't know. It didn't really come out too much. Might be a good question to start asking. Um, and it's, I'm glad you mentioned O-Power. We're basically replicating their success in the, or trying to replicate their success in the, the residential space, but in the automotive. Um, as far as why insurance companies want to partner with Automatic, um, I don't know. There was an interesting uh, thesis, I guess, is that what changed people's behavior most was comparison to other people. Uh, so initially, would you compare to some sort of ideal model, or would the would the information actually be uh, somehow compared across different cars that were using the system? Or um, I don't know. That's kind of what we're trying to figure out now is what a, a, a beta launch might look like or a, a pilot program. Um, I'm working a little bit with some of the behavioral science researchers here to you know, figure out how many drivers we have to have, how many different types of vehicles to get the st statistically significant results, I guess. Sure. Are you looking for like a hardware engineer or software engineer, like a data wrangler? Um, mainly software. The, the hardware is essentially a commodity. Um, you can buy off the shelf OBD dongles on Amazon for $15. Um, the real core of kind of what we're doing is more like the analytics and the software and the reporting. Um, initially, we're, we were just looking at doing a simple either email or paper report. Um, not quite a full app yet, although that is also an option. Sure. So with, with automatic, they kind of do like six or seven things, and none of them are that compelling that's made me want to part with 99 bucks yet, right? Even though I think it's cool. Yep. So what's the one thing that you have found that gets people interested, or, or is the pain that you identified in your customer discovery? Um, specifically like with the drivers? Yeah. Um, the one thing they need. Yes. Yeah, so I, I mentioned I did about 30 customer discovery interviews with drivers at the beginning. Um, it was a while ago, but the biggest trend from that was when I asked what's the biggest pain point around driving, it was some type of ongoing cost. So some people cited fuel, some people cited insurance, and then the third one was like maintenance with um, oil changes and the scheduling around that. Um, so I don't know if I've dug down deep enough um, to completely address that, but the answers around um, I want to save on fuel and save on insurance kind of fit in with the channel we're going down. Sure. The insurance companies that already use the technology for some of their policyholders, do they provide is fuel economy one of the things that they tell the, the their customer that they're charging more From, or less because of their performance? Um, so you're asking, do they use that as like a metric in the UBI program? Yeah. Um, we haven't come across that yet, no. Um, I think we're out of time. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, usually we have about two sections of community announcements. Uh, I think this time around uh, we might only have uh, one. Uh, do people have announcements that they want to make about upcoming events, uh, job opportunities, uh, meetups, that sort of thing? Yeah. Hi everybody, my name is Rob Goodsby and I'm an assistant professor of urban planning. And I moved here from Boston a year ago. I looked for signs of, of life and you were one of them. So I'm planning with some folks at the School of Information an event on October 4th called uh, My Cities. 
So uh, we're all about um, mapping, social media, other things applied um, to improve cities very broadly. So if your company or you're even just interested um, or your company has a product related to that, we'd welcome you. So um, we have uh, uh, submissions are due August 22nd, and then we're going to put out um, the schedule. Cost 20 bucks. It's in the student union. And I'm trying to cross the square hole of academia with the round hole of entrepreneurship. And in Boston, it happened a lot easier uh, than it's working here in Ann Arbor, so prove me wrong. Um, uh, MyCities.info is the site. Thanks. Uh, other uh, community announcements, I believe. Yes, yeah, Scott. Hey, guys. I'm Scott. I run a small group called Coffee House Coders. Uh, Zach, you can help me kind of find uh, found it, uh, if you will. And uh, we do every two weeks, we get together, we help people learn programming, help on side projects, kind of match up people that just want to learn with people that want to mentor. And we have a lot of fun. Uh, right now we meet at Expresso Royale. Uh, it's Coffee House Coders on Meetup. And we're not going to be having this one this Wednesday, but next Wednesday, around 7 p.m. is the next one. So sign up, come on, join, and uh, we'll at least have some coffee. So. My name is Joe Morrison. Uh, I just wanted to announce next Monday from 5 to 7, Spark is hosting a free legal office hours. Uh, you can just walk in, sit down with a lawyer for 10 minutes, bounce questions off them. Uh, and we know people don't really love to hang out with lawyers. We also have free beer and food. <laughs> so, yeah. 5 to 7, uh, Spark Central next Monday, the 21st. Uh, speaking of hanging with onerous people, Spark is also doing the same thing with marketing folks. Uh, the second Tuesday of July and August, you missed last one. Next one is second Tuesday. Help me out here. You can do this. All right, it's the second Tuesday in August. It's Michigan Marketing Minds. Check it out at Ann Arbor, USA or 15 minute speed date with uh, marketing dweeb and free food and beer. Hi everyone, my name is Omid uh, from MyPath5. Uh, we're a team focusing on the restaurant review space. We have a crowdsourcing platform. We have three software developers and one person that does everybody else, everything else, that's me. Um, we're looking for one marketer and one back-end developer to add to our team. So if any of you are interested in marketing or back-end development, talk to me. Hi, I'm Chris Kareka from TD Ameritrade. We opened an office on uh, Main and Huron downtown pretty recently, and we're hiring software engineers right now. So it's not it's not trading algorithm stuff. It's not anything that you might you know think with Wall Street stuff. But we're we're doing prototyping and experimenting with a lot of new technology for customers of things like using Xbox with Connect to visualize portfolios and things like that to. Um, personalizing news articles, <coughs> stocks you own, and having that associated with your account, and all sorts of other types of things that I think are a lot more interesting to people anyway. So uh, feel free to talk to me afterwards if you're interested. The best sneak peek at the office for Steve is quite sharp. They've got a really cool rebounding punch going on. Uh, hi, I'm David from uh, Solocial, and I'm looking for a back end developer. So um, we just had somebody leave because they're getting a baby, and uh, we have a team of uh, two other developers. So um, please get in touch. It's a really cool like Instagram meets Spotify. It's social media and stuff. So. <coughs> okay, cool. Well, one last announcement, perhaps. I'm Doug Song, as you at Security. Um, we are growing very quickly. Uh, if you go to jobs.duosecurity.com, there's a chance that we're probably hiring something you're interested in because we're hiring a lot of folks right now. Basically, for this year, we've been hiring about two people a week. So we're very rapid growth. But uh, check it out. So, oh. yeah, um, I'm a level game developer, and I'm just looking for someone like a co-founder that can help me get all my games. I'm going to uh, transition uh, back to the presentations. Uh, and so, without further ado, uh, marketing. Right. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is Aki. I, uh, I'm actually based in Boston. I'm just here for a wedding, but I'm in Ann Arbor. I lived in Ann Arbor for 10 years. I grew up here and love it. So, um, I was. Doug graciously twisted my arm to present here, so here I am. <laughs> you didn't have to twist my arm that much. But, so my background is in big data and analytics and machine learning, and my passion is in also in online marketing. So I, uh, I wanted to, you know, we basically found a startup to do big, apply big data machine learning to online marketing, and that's what we've done with Market News. So quick poll here, Who is it, who's worked in like SEO or content marketing or web marketing? A couple of hands. Okay, cool. So you guys might appreciate some of the technical terms a bit more, but basically what we do is we optimize 
content marketing on related keywords. So related keyword would be something like, uh, you know, if you're selling dog food, you know, you've got a blog post on dog food, so puppy food, puppy chow, nutrition, high fiber, these things are all related to dog food. So, the, you know, you might want to, if you're writing a blog post about dog food, you might want to mention, oh, high fiber foods and so on. Uh, so, so I'm going to show you an example of a product that, this is our internal, we got our internal sandbox site. So we just launched this hour and a half ago and then I tested it 30 minutes ago. Uh, so hopefully it works for all um, But uh, So this is, AppNata is one of our early customers uh, and they do stuff like performance management for app performance management. So this is their blog, you can see it's all these sort of technical type posts. And so, you know, what, what this tool that, so this is sort of all their content, right? So what I'm gonna show you is um, we got this tool, oh gosh, the, the um, well, let's see if you can see it. But anyway, we've got this tool that will analyze their, all of their blog content and, and suggest kind of related keywords that they should be writing content about. You know, because that's a problem if you're marketers, like what should we write content about? So what I'm going to do, and my gosh, this is some ugly text here, but um, I'm going to put in AppNet up into the website address here, and I'm going to put in some keywords like performance management, uh, bear with me, management, application performance management. These are stuff that is in their, in their uh, keyword strategy. AppNet up, and there's one more, Java monitoring. Okay, so then I click analyze. If I had a typo, it's too bad. And anyway, what it's doing now is it's taking these keywords, these four keywords that they want to rank for, and it's using those to generate a very long list of related keywords. So what are stuff related to all of these? And then it's, it's also, I've pre-crawled their site, so it's also comparing these keywords, how often do they come up on the site? And so we can see, for example, Java profilers is here. So it does not occur on their site at all. They don't mention it in their content. But the relevance is 85%, so it's highly relevant to these subjects. And it drives this much volume, 0.2K, uh, so two, uh, 200 searches a month globally. And there's some sort of competition here. You know, there are 14,000 web pages on the internet that mention this keyword. And if you were to do pay PPC for it, the CPC would be like 7.52, so seven bucks and 50 cents to get this keyword. And so therefore the attractiveness is blocks, 46 or whatever. So these are all ranked on attractiveness. Attractiveness is basically a number quantifying how easy it is to, for you to get relevant traffic for this keyword. So it's a compound, of, it's a function of relevance and then all these keyword things. So something that's highly relevant will generate a lot of volume and doesn't have a lot of competition will have a high attractiveness. So basically Java Profiles comes up top and, and so our suggestion then to this site is they should write content about Java Profilers and so on and so forth. And you just get these long lists of keywords and then that helps you inform your content marketing strategy. And you can see some of them they've covered, some of them they've covered really often, so that number is really high, they might want to back off. Uh, SaaS solutions, they mentioned five times in their web content overall. So this is our site analysis, or like SEO audit tool. It took about 30 seconds to run. With the crawl, it'll take five minutes, or depending on how large the website is. And then we have a couple other tools, like we have a WordPress tool where you put in a blog post and we'll tell you what's missing from that post. So, you know, put in performance management, it might say, oh, here are some keywords that you might want to add in that post. Okay. It's a little ghetto, but email me if you have any questions. <laughs> questions, well, more questions. Yep? What's the big difference between you and uh... Spy? Keyword Spy? Keyword Spy. Yeah, there are a lot of key keyword tools like Keyword Spy, Word Tracker, SEM, SEM Raw, Spy Food. They don't do related keywords um, at all, really. They do, they do, like, they won't tell you keywords that are off of the seed term. So if you give it performance management, it'll do like performance management app, performance management Boston, perform, you know, but it won't give you like Java profiling is related to performance management. 
Now with Google, they uh, kind of switched more towards quality. I mean, does this help with like the quality of the actual blog post or content? Yeah, exactly. And that's why we're doing related keywords. So if you add in related keywords and you write them in in a meaningful way, it actually boosts the quality. The problem with a lot of SEO, they'll keyword, you know, spam, like they'll say, dog food is great because dog food, blah, blah. No, you have like, dog food is great because the nutritional aspects of high fiber, you know, it just, it actually reads better to you. Do you have to have an account with Google uh, before you can use this application, or do you have that account and it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter, yeah. We don't use Google at all to get this. We get some of our keyword data from SpyFu, but that's just the volume data. We have our, our proprietary platform generates these keywords. Where, where do you grab your CPC data from? Uh, SpyFu as well. That, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So I really like the product, but how do you price something like this? Because if I have a blog that I've been running for a long time, I might just run it once and then screenshot the data. Or just take it. What, why would I need to use your product multiple times? And yeah, that's a very good question. So, like something like an audit, you might only do it once a quarter or once a month, so that would be priced higher. We launched it an hour and a half ago, something like 500 bucks a report or something like that is reasonable. Uh, I've been sort of talking at that range with some, some consultants. Some of the other tools you might use every time you publish a blog post or you might want to refine your keyword strategy. You might want to expand your you know, top five, top 10 keywords into top 200. So there's a lot of kind of positioning you can do if you have a tool to help you think, brainstorm a whole bunch of keywords for you. Any other questions? No, I think it's a great idea though. Comment, I think it's a great idea. Thank you. We, do that. Thank you. We, we started this a year and a half ago, and uh, I went full time last September. And uh, we've got a team of seven, two full time, and set five contractors, and sort of bootstrapped and all that. What are you looking for next? Uh, great question. Yeah, next up. So uh, test this product more. <laughs> uh, we've got to redo our site because this is going to kind of change the whole flow. Um, I would love to talk to you know anyone who's interested in SEM, uh, I'm sorry, SEO and content marketing. People who might or might be like SEO consultants might be interested in reselling. Um, I talked to somebody uh, uh, here who's who's done a lot of SEO, and he's saying you know typically at their company a report like this, this audit report would take you know 10 hours and it would cost 200 bucks an hour. So if we can just or actually 20 hours, so it's like a four grand spend. So if we sell a report for 500 bucks, and then you add in a couple more hours of human labor, you know, you, you, you change the economics part, but you save a lot of money. So, you know, anyone who's interested in kind of, uh, you know, SEO consultant or content marketer, I'd love to talk. Have you talked to local Google folks? I mean, they have like hundreds of inside sales folks here on AdWords and all these creative maximizers that are just writing ad copy for a lot of their SMB clients and so forth. Yeah, we actually, PPC and AdWords and SEM, we don't really have a, a, a play in that space yet. It's sort of related, like SEM, you think SEO, but it, we don't get into that space yet. Um, we're, we're working on a tool that's going to help improve your quality score so that, you know, you can, you can kind of tune your ad and your landing page so you get a higher quality score from Google. But we're sort of, like, we're not, originally when we built this, we thought, oh yeah, Google will buy it. But Google, you know, we're actually kind of like, helping you rank higher on Google. Right. So it's not clear if Google like likes this or not, you know, but um, it's not, they can't, like we're not doing anything. We basically recreated a step in their process. So we're not like doing anything weird with their data. But I guess the short question is, their short answer is no, I haven't talked to Google. You should. Okay. Sales folks comp differently, right? They're, 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 they're they're, they're selling ads to you know their, their, their clients, and so the, the more ideas they have for what they can advertise. I see. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah I should. Yeah, that's a good call. Let me squash. Um, squash. Yeah, I mean, there's there's not much they could do to squash us that we've thought of, but they could build another one, I guess. <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, that almost concludes our formal programming. Um, there is one last uh, issue of note that we have to resolve, and that is, are people interested in grabbing dinner or drinks somewhere afterwards later? Yeah, Dominic's maybe? Dominic's, Dominic's. Some other place? Uh, <laughs> Dominic's it is.
Uh, so feel free to stick around for a little bit. Uh, feel free to uh, ask our presenters or anyone uh, questions you may still have. Uh, and you might head over there and, oh yes, why not? Uh, just quickly, uh, our, we have two major sponsors for ATU Tech. Uh, the University of Michigan Law School Entrepreneurship Clinic has been very, very kind in letting us uh, use this space now for almost a year, I think. Uh, R2 uh, Vive is our uh, professional uh, video uh, live streaming and uh, recording service. Uh, and then A2 Geeks is sort of this meta organization in Ann Arbor um, that helps organize a lot of other events. Uh, if you have any questions about that, please let me know. Thanks, everyone.